So welcome everyone. I am Sue Keisler, Executive Director of XMinds, the organization that's hosting tonight's event. First, for the Spanish speakers in the audience, Carolina Harp will give you instructions for finding the Spanish audio channel. Uh, Carolina. Uh, buenas noches. Uh, para aquellas personas que quieran escuchar la, eh, la presentación en español, eh, diríjanse a la barra de herramientas en la parte de abajo de su pantalla y encontrarán el uh, link de interpretación y pueden escoger el idioma español. Gracias por venir. Thank you, Carolina. Okay, we have only until 8.30 to cover an awful lot of information, so I'm going to keep my introduction brief. We want to bring you tonight a thorough and clear review of all the parts of the document that forms the basis for special education services that students receive at school. That document, we all know, is the Individualized Educational Plan, or the IEP. Our speakers tonight are two professionals who not only hold advanced degrees in general education, special education, and school administration, but they draw on a deep well of experience with the IEP process. Stacy Gans Khan and Donna Sagona have served as special education teachers, as general education teachers, as staff development specialists, MCPS administrators, and as advocates for parents in IEP meetings. They also have children themselves who have learning differences. So they have truly seen the IEP process from every angle. We're very grateful to them for taking the time to share their expertise and to answer your questions tonight. Stacy and Donna will answer questions after their slide presentation and will also pause at various places throughout their presentation um, to see if there are questions at that time. Audience members, please go ahead and put your questions in the chat at any time in Spanish or in English. Finally, before we start the presentation, I do want to quickly mention we are recording this in both English and Spanish, and we'll make the recordings and the presentation slides available to you in a few days. Stacy and Donna, thank you so much for being with us tonight. I will turn it over to you. Okay, Sue, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And, and thank you, XMinds, for inviting us tonight about a topic we're very passionate about and very happy to be able to be here and share with everyone. So I'm just going to get my pointer on my annotate button so that I can use that to hopefully guide everybody as well. So, so we're going to talk tonight about the why, the what, the why, and how of IEPs. Mm -hmm. And we're going to explain the IEPs section by section. We know there will be a lot of questions. We are going to try hard to answer those in our presentation. The questions that were sent beforehand, we have read and hopefully they will be addressed. Um, we also would like, it's gonna be hard to do it this way, sorry. We'd also um, like to tell you what we hope that you will gain by the end of this um, session. So we hope that at the end, you'll be able to identify the what, why, and how of an IEP, articulate the three crucial components of a well-written IEP, understand the laws that govern an IEP, and know your parental rights, roles, and responsibilities as they relate to the IEP. Because this is such a lengthy topic, and when Donna and I were um, putting the presentation together, we knew that there was no way we'd be able to cover it all in an hour and a half. So we um, would like to continue the conversation with anyone who is interested um, on Monday, March 15th at 7 p.m. Um, via Zoom. And there's a Google form which I can send in the chat as well to fill out. Um, if you'd like to come, once we receive the form, we'll just send you the link. Um, you can ask a question or you can just put your name in and come and listen. We know there's a lot of questions around this topic and Donna and I are very um, passionate yeah. about answering we all talk questions. talk forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so and we do. Yes. Yeah, so we're going to try to streamline this as much as possible um, for you tonight. So first, let's look at the big picture. What is an IEP? Why are IEPs created? 
and how is an IEP developed and implemented? And Donna's going to explain to you the equality, equity, and no barriers piece. Well, we really love this. You, many of you may have seen this, this image, but we really love this image because it's a visual that ex explains to us um, what the purpose of an IEP is. And basically, it's to level the playing field, right? To remove the barriers, to make sure that all of our children have access to you know, the curriculum and can achieve. So... You know, we just, you know, everybody needs to see that soccer game, right? Or just yes. to see that soccer game. So. Absolutely. And you've probably heard, um, you know, or you've been involved in either IEP meetings where you're unsure of what's happening or it's gotten contentious or you mm -hmm. don't believe you're, you're being heard. And that's really um, one of the main points about tonight is how you are going to now know the IEP and be able to be a stronger advocate for, for your child. If there's So we're trying to, we're going to be removing the barriers to you as well, right? So this is, um, this is kind of, this is kind of your IEP meeting, right? Or right. Your IEP. Right. Right. Um, so what we what we wanted to um, to make sure you, you know that parents understand is that an IEP is a plan written down, obviously, but it is it is a written record of your child's whole special education program, right? So um, and so it's it, it that's why it, you have to be so careful. And it's so important to have the plan, the written plan, be so clear and so concise that anybody picking up that plan could implement it with fidelity, right? Yeah. So the plan itself should include a what, why, and how. So um, the plan should say, and we'll, we'll show you some of the parts where it does, it, it should explain why your child is eligible, eligible for special education. And that's going to, so in the plan, it's going to talk about the nature of the disability and how that disability affects your child's access to the curriculum. Then, um, in the plan, you're going to have a section that says what your child's current levels are of performance. What are their strengths? What are their areas of needs? Very clear present levels documented with you know, a lot of data, appropriate data. And then there's some what's part of the IEP, obviously. Um, what your Then there's what your child needs to know and be able to do in order to succeed, and that you're going to find in your goal areas. And then there's the how section, and that's the supplementary aid section and the assistive technology section. And that's the section where um, you're going to discuss instructional strategies and accommodations and how those, um, those how to remove those barriers um, to learning. And a lot of times when you um, are in an IEP meeting, um, at least I know when I've been in many IEP meetings as a parent, um, I feel like the words are just words on paper, mm -hmm. but no one is monitoring those words and no right. one is making sure after those meetings that data is being collected and that sub aids and services are being given. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll talk about that as well. Right. And that was one of the questions that someone had written, like, how do I know, you know, what's going on? Well, after this presentation, hopefully you'll have, some, you know, it's, it is like, what is that saying? Trust, but verify. And so I think as parents, you know, we're, we walk in and we're like, oh, we trust the school. We don't want to ruffle feathers. We just, you know, yes, whatever you say. And you're like a deer in the headlights sometimes, you know. So, um, but it is, it, you have a right to verify, you know, to mo and you, you should monitor and you have a right to verify. So, and important to say that as a parent, your voice mm -hmm. and, and what you have to share at the meeting is just as important as anyone on the school team, if mm -hmm. not more important. Mm -hmm. um, we always tell our parents to trust their gut. Most of the time, your, your gut is correct. And if you feel your child's not getting something, then you need to push more for it. So we had a lot of questions beforehand about the difference between an IEP versus a 504. We're not going to go into too much detail here because that could be a training all on its own. But if you want to know what the one difference is, it's really the specialized instruction. The 504 does not have specialized instruction and the goals. or goals and objectives, right? Um, it will have the... Um, the the sub aids and services or, or ways to accommodate um, the the curriculum, but really, if there is um, any kind of a disability, as far as um, a learning disability, ADHD, executive functioning, I mean, the list goes on and on. There are thirteen um, there there are thirteen conditions that are covered under. Um, idea. And also, I think that's another important piece of this. The IEP is, is uh, governed under IDEA, where the 504 is part 
of um, the Rehabilitation Act. So different um, laws that, that govern each of them and really um, quite different in, in what they look like. So what to know before you go? Now we're gonna get into really the, the, the meat of, of the IEP. As we, as we said before, parents and, guardians, parents and guardians are equal members of the IEP team. Mm -hmm. So if you are at a meeting and you don't agree with a decision, the whole school team does, that doesn't matter. You say, I, I, I disagree. You, you put it in what's called prior written notice and the school team will make that known. On the day of the IEP, be prepared to share your thoughts and ideas. You can you can create an agenda and send it. We we oftentimes work with parents to to do that to craft the agenda and send to the school beforehand. Mm -hmm. Ask for student work samples uh, beforehand. If they're going to be shared at the meeting, they need to be sent home beforehand. And bring your own samples because sometimes the samples that the school is showing. Um, are going to be those that are shown in the best light, so to speak. And you want authentic samples of what your child knows and what mm -hmm. they can do. And there should always be in that. Now, the, the, oftentimes systems will say, well, that's not, we're not required. And no, they're not required to show um, student work, but it's the best, it's the best practice because they're telling, you know, you're hearing all this data or this, this, and this, but it would be just wonderful if you could see a worksheet or a paper or, a, a, you know, a, a, um, paper that was assigned or a written assignment that was taken through the whole process, you know, the, the brainstorming, the rough draft and the finished product. So it is, I would, I would always have a work sample at a meeting. Absolutely. Math problems as well. So, you know, what the child knows, what the child doesn't know in the math, you know, calculations. And schedule at least an hour for the meeting. Some schools um, are trying to get away with 45 minutes and 30 minutes. I, I don't even know how that's possible. If your school is scheduling IEPs for less than an hour, write back and tell them uh, you'd like an hour at least. If you know there's a lot to cover and it's going to be a long meeting, then ask them for even um, a longer time period. And remember, you can have as many IEP meetings as you like. Uh, we're often in meetings and who's ever chairing the meeting will say, oh, I just, you know, just want to keep track of the time. We have 25 minutes left. And my response is that that's fine. We cannot have another meeting. Don't do not be rushed. Um, the IEP does not have to be completed in one meeting and it can take. Uh, we're still working on an IEP that that was we started in October with a school system. So. It, it can be lengthy and it can take time, but the end result is worth it. And you can ask for a facilitated meeting for free. So a facilitated meeting, um, you request it, and it means that there'll be a facilitator who is not, um, you know, who's, who's neutral. They're not there for the school system. They're not there for you. They are simply there so that the, the conversation and the meeting can move forward and they, they help to clarify and have both sides um, come to an agreement, but sometimes there's no disagreement. It's just nice to have that person who is completely neutral. So the distribution of IEP documents, and we get this a lot, um, 10 days before your IEP, you should get a notice. And that notice should tell you what the meeting type is. Is this an annual review? Is it a, a reavow meeting? Is it to go over um, evaluation? It should, it should be checked what type of meeting it is. And like I said, you should have that 10 days before. Five days before your meeting. Is that Maryland? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah Maryland. That, that's idea. Five, five days uh, before the meeting, you should have a draft IEP. You should have teacher reports, student work, and any types of evaluations. So when you get to the IEP meeting itself, I'm so, and sorry, this is a quick timeline of, of the um, law and the days um, for each for each part of the IEP. But when you get to the meeting the, itself, you should have no surprises. There shouldn't be anything in that IEP that is going to shock you in any way. So now we're gonna start with our first big rock, right? And um, 
Donna's going to talk a little bit about that. And our first big rock, go ahead, Donna, would be, you know, we talked about the present levels, right? Um, and the present levels is um, the section where you're going to include the diagnosis and assessment data and teacher and the teacher input. And we're going to go into more detail on the present levels. And then um, in the, the Maryland IEPs, the Montgomery County IEPs, the um, the supplementary aids comes before the goal section, right? But it's kind of like the chicken or the egg, you know? The sub, the goal section is what the student should know and be able to do, you know, um, at, at the end of the year, right? The goal. And then the supplement, supplementary aids are the things that you're going to use to help them achieve the goal, help to level the playing field, the accommodation. So, you know, um, it could go, the supplementary aids could go after the goals in the IP or it could go before, but... You know, the county put Montgomery County puts the goals on flat. Um, let's see. Uh, and they're all intertwined. Yeah. Yes. It's through, not linear. Yeah. yeah. Through, throughout the, the document. So when you go to the meeting, they're going to talk to, about the present levels first. Then they'll go to the supplementary aids. Then they'll go to the goals. Sometimes, you know, we think maybe you should go to the present levels for one, one for reading and then go to the reading goal. And then and get, so but but it'll you know, it, it isn't it isn't always linear, but um, bottom line, there should there should be no surprises when you sit down and talk about the present levels. And why should there no be no surprises? Because and this is the surprise to me because I was a teacher for twenty one years and I can't believe this, but you would not believe the number of parents that we talk to that say I haven't gotten a piece of paper home for begin since the beginning of the year, or I I don't know what my child's working on, or I don't see any work samples or whatever. So you should regular. Be, regularly be receiving, whether your child has an IEP or not, you should be receiving student work, like, you know, classwork with feedback, um, quizzes, and um, not just quizzes with grades, but quizzes with or tests with feedback. Um, you know, you the student should know the progress as well, right? So there there should be no surprises. And I, that's, my, that's my biggest surprise about this whole thing, right? Um, and then there should be homeschool communication. So in your IEP, when you're writing your, um, when you're doing your supplementary aids, make sure that one of your supplementary aids is homeschool communication. Now, we talked about long meetings. Well, don't just have them say homeschool communication, right? It should be, all right, let's talk about what it's going to look like to as to as much as extent as possible. Like, is it going to be weekly? What's it going to be? What what are they going to be communicating about? Who's going to communicate it? Um, and so then, if you had evidence of student work, if you had homeschool communication, you know, you're not going to be surprised when you sit down at that IEP meeting to read the present levels on the, on the IP. And then the state is going to talk to you about um, one of the things that we're also surprised about. <laughs> so actually there, um, there are surprises, uh, the quarterly progress reports, um, because that's, yeah, that's but, a whole different thing. So quarterly progress reports uh, should come home um, with or very close to every report card date. So when you receive a report card, you should have your quarterly progress reports, or it should come home. I believe it's a you know within like a week after. And those quarterly progress reports are reporting on the goals and objectives and how the student is doing towards mastering those goals. <laughs> As an advocate, this was the biggest kind of, it, it still remains the biggest um, aha for me, I guess, or question. And that is the fact that on these quarterly progress reports, we never, we barely ever see a mastered goal. It, it'll say, um, you know, working, mm -hmm. working towards in achieving progress. the goal or in progress, never mastered. And then you go to the IEP meeting and all of a sudden that goal that, is still not mastered is gone and a new goal is written. Right. So you have to be really clear and you have to make sure that if your quarterly progress reports have not, um, it, if it shows not mastered, that you talk to the team about why. And Donna and I have been in many meetings where they can't tell us why it hasn't been mastered and a new goal is put on. So then we say, oh, I guess we're going to need you know, a bigger IEP, we're going to need more service hours now because those goals weren't met and you feel that these goals are also important. And, and um, a big difference between a progress report, obviously, and a report card is the progress report focus only on the goal, only on the objectives. It's not 
progress report on the curriculum. The report card is your progress report on the curriculum. So um, you really need to look, we really need to have those progress reports um, because that's that's the curriculum or that's the IEP. But also making sure that, um, well, I think one of the, the uh, systemic issues is that the special ed teacher is the case manager for the goals, right? And that special ed teacher needs to make sure that that goal is in front of the teacher all the time. So the teacher really knows the goal and how to teach it. And then the special ed teacher is in collecting data constantly, asking the teacher, well, how's so-and-so doing on inferencing, you know, um, on the goal? And, and they have a process in place to collect data from the um, classroom teacher, from the art teacher, because, you know, the art teacher is showing a picture. What do you think this picture is about and why? Well, that's inferencing, you know, and music and, and PE. So um, it's that data collection that comes in around that specific goal area so that you can really find the present level. So um, that's, that's, you know, a huge, a huge issue. But there is a difference between report cards and quarterly progress reports. And here's um, the law that goes along with the quarterly progress reports that students with a disability, um, that parents are regularly informed of a student's progress toward annual goals. And that's when you ask, has this goal been mastered? And for those, um, it, it's just worth a read every once in a while, the Code of Maryland Regulations or COMAR. Uh, there's many, many um, regulations and laws and all of them can um, that govern um, not only IEPs, but other types of um, school procedures, and they can all be found. Um, and that's and that's the link, which you probably can't can't link to, but we'll send it out. And that's the one to the Montgomery County. Oh, and that's the one to the Montgomery County Re regulations. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the present levels of academic achievement and functional performance. Um, they they might be referred to as the PLAP or the PLOP. Um, they want to ensure that whatever information is shared at the meetings along, aligns with the PLOP section written in the IEP. There are many times that we will go into a meeting and there will be no teacher report. You always want a teacher report. And then we'll ask the teacher to share with us how, how the student is doing. And they give some really great information. Well, that information needs to be in the present levels of performance. That information is important and it needs to be captured. As we continue to say, this should not be new information. If your student is not, uh, you know, reading and they can't read the word cat uh, or a simple CVC word, that should be new to you. Someone should have um, been in contact with you, should have discussed that with you. You should have seen it in, in their work and their progress notes. Um, again, that this should not be where you're coming to a meeting and you're being ambushed with all of the information that, that you didn't know about your child. And then you have to make sure that those present levels of performance, um, that it measures uh, what it's supposed to. So in other words, in the math problem solving present level, uh, many times we see calculation placed in there. Or vice versa. Or right. Because that shows us that that teacher really doesn't understand or that team doesn't understand how to clearly collect data for either math calculation or math problem solving. We see that a lot with, with um, written um, mechanics, with content. Right. And, 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 the and social mechanics, emotional. And a lot with social and executive emotional. functioning. They don't have an understanding of the definition of, well, what is what falls under executive functioning. So I, I know that, so now I need to collect data. I need to look for that in the student's performance. So um, that, that's a huge thing we see. Yes, so we're gonna, okay. So um, this is a present level or a plop, um, kind of a checklist, right? And I'm gonna go through it very quickly because there's a lot here. Do the present level statements include current and measurable data that correspond with measurable IEP goals? Uh, do the present level statements include baseline data? And you need to have baseline data. If you don't know where you started, you don't know where, where you're going. Um, you need to have academic achievement, including subjects in reading, math, and spelling. But I cannot stress enough that you also need, especially if you are in um, 
a, a middle, I think more a middle school, but in, across all areas, you need the art, music, PE, you need all the specials. Mm -hmm. um, Elementary. Uh, yes. If, if a child is having needs in, um, let's say, receptive, expressive language, that doesn't stop when they leave a classroom to go to their to, to go to a special. In fact, some of these um, present levels yeah. you'll see are become more what's the word I'm looking for, more noticeable um, in, in some of, of the specials, especially when it comes to following directions or behavior. So that's really, really important. And when I was um, when I was a principal, I was so proud of my arts team or my team because we had our philosophy was all the arrows have to be going in the same place, right? And everybody needs to understand that IEP so that the, um, you know, the, not only do they collect data on the goals, but they also need to be able to, um, Teach the goal, you know, teach to the goal. Teach. So my PE teacher, I was watching an observation one time where he was really focusing on inferencing. It was really neat. And he, because, and he was able to collect data on this child or was in the classroom that had some inferencing need. So the um, the specialists need to know the goals because they can weave and the press and, and then collect data because they can weave their, um, they can, you know, um, tailor their instruction to meet those goals as well. So all the arrows really need to be going in the same place. And we, you also want to look for those functional areas like communication, fine motor, behavior and social skills, daily life activities if mm -hmm. needed. Um, you want to know if that present level, is it accurately describing what your child is doing now? And it's really important when you get the parent form for your IEP, uh, MCPS form, oh. 330 dash, I'll look it up, but that should come home with every IEP and you want to make sure you fill that form out mm -hmm. and you send it back so that your, your information as a parent, what you're observing and seeing is also um, put into the present level statement as well. And then you also want to make sure that, that the strengths of your child are listed in the present levels um, and that the needs related to the disability are listed in the present levels. Mm -hmm. And again, there's your parental input and concerns about your child's strengths and needs. There needs to be a goal for each identified present level. If you have a present level and, the, and it says areas impacted um, by, if it's checked that this is an area of impact, it needs to have a goal and objective or be addressed in sub aids and services. And then what is the plan for the deficits determined and how will you measure progress to show that the present levels have improved? So we've done a lot of talking and we, and we hope that there are some questions, comments um, that we might be able to answer. And I- Before we move on to big rock number two. <laughs> yes. So um, I'm looking at the chat. Um, and we'll we'll try to we'll try to give some quick answers, um, so so that we have time. Um, is an IEP any different from high school and middle school? No. I, what is in the IEP will will be different. The IEP itself right. is is the same. Mm -hmm. um, there are elective and language class requirements which cut into interventions. Yes, but you don't. <laughs> so so that's a really that's, long answer. Yes. Um, there are, if if you need an intervention and you're in high school, mm -hmm. there are many ways that that can be done. Mm -hmm. um, and pull out or self-contained classes, yes, that that's true. There are a lot of co-taught classes mm -hmm. in in high school. Um, there's a resource class. There are actually a, many. Uh, resources and I could go, I could talk about that for a really long time, but hopefully that right. helps some. But uh, that's why, if you know your child's goals in the IEP, and you, um, that's why it's so important that every teacher that your child sees knows the goals, knows how to, um, you know, implement them, and knows how to instruct and implement the um, supplementary aids because they are a they are a case. Um, they're provider, right? Mm -hmm. They're responsible for that, those goals. It's just not the special ed teacher at all. And that's why we talk about the arrows going in the same place. Everybody needs to understand that um, that IEP. And that's what you can ask, you know, how are you addressing this goal in your physics class or whatever, you know? So yeah, yeah. That I think is the biggest way, you know, mm -hmm. the, um, 
I heard years ago that, you know, saying somebody told me that um, the goal of a special ed teacher is to put her, him or herself out of business. Because in theory, if you had incredible best, you know, first teaching, um, you would just need that. You, you need the, you, you just maybe need the legal accommodations like extra time on a test or something. But, you know, good teaching is good teaching. And those teachers need to be as responsible as the special ed teacher. And I think Brenda makes a good comment when she said, expect to do a lot of advocating, even though advocating is a goal. And that's so true. And we see that a lot where it'll be, um, have a self-advocating goal. Mm -hmm. And Donna and I always say, children just don't grow up and know how to advocate. There are adults who don't know how to advocate for themselves. So that has to also be explicitly taught. I get uh, I, I sigh when I see that um, a child needs to be advocating for themselves and the teacher will say, well, they're not advocating. Well, what does advocating look right. like and, yes. and who has modeled that? Right, right. Um, is an IEP focused mm -hmm. only on math? And Cindy, this is Melanie. That's my yeah. I, if just to save you from scrolling up and down the chat, perfect. I can read the questions to you. Um, perfect. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Go for it. That's our accommodation. Thank yes. you. Yes. Thank you. Go, go, go ahead, Melanie. Okay. So um, the next question is, I think you started it, is an IEP's focus only on math and English subjects? Why is there not a focus on others such as science, oh. art, and music? Oh. oh, So an IEP should include all of that, right? Um, how, do, how do the deficits in reading, for instance, impact um, the the world studies or or math problem solving. Right. No, the IEP encompasses the child's entire school day. Right. And the accommodations, the, the sub aids and services, which we're going to talk about that, um, will take place in every right. class. But you're not going to have a goal that says um, so um, student will be able to name all the elements on the periodic table, right? But it's it'll be it most likely is going to be a reading goal, right? Or a processing goal or an executive functioning goal or something that they need to work on in the science class. And so be, support. be supported in the science class. So the science teacher needs to know that so-and-so has a goal for inferencing. And so while we're reading and while we're doing experiments, that, that needs to be supported. And, and also goals are not just academic. Right. Um, you know, I think of one client who, um, the IEP started only for anxiety because it has to have an educational impact. And her anxiety was so debilitating that it did have an educational impact. So you can have an IEP for anxiety. You can have an IEP for um, ADHD. You can have an IEP for behavioral issues. Um, it, all of all of these issues may be um, all together, right? And that would be at the code of OHI, other health impairments. But a child's IEP follows them everywhere throughout the school day. Even and after, even if, extracurricular. Yes, yeah. even extracurricular activities. And we also have um, sub aids and services and goals and objectives around lunch, mm -hmm. uh, around recess. So it's not just those academics. Okay, sorry, next question. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll try to be a little bit quicker on the questions. Yeah. Fine. Um, the next question is, can a 504 plan ever include interventions like OT, occupational therapy? No, that's your specialized instruction. That's if if your child needs OG um, OT or, or OT or SLP, that's going to be an IEP. Now, I will say this and, um, you know, I'm going to be really honest because this has come up in many meetings. OT, PT and speech and language have become next to impossible to get in the county. You might get 30 minutes for a month. So that's become a real fight lately for many, many parents. Um, we have many parents whose children have significant OT needs and they are being given either 30 minutes a month or a consult. That's happening. We're seeing that all around the county lately. But to be clear, that's with an IEP, not a 504. Correct. Yes, yeah, not a 504. Those are related, Thank, those are related you, services. Yes, IEP. related services. Um, along the same lines, I'm just going to go ahead and ask the next question because it's another 504 plan question asking if a 504 can include academic interventions like reading intervention. No, that's because that, again, would be that specialized instruction. If, if your child is needing an intervention, 
most of the time, and they have a 504, we we would say that the 504 is probably not working, and you'll need to go to an to an IEP screening meeting. Okay. Um. Uh. The next question is how how do you get a facilitator for an IEP meeting? That's a great question. Um, so if you, um, I, we can put that in the chat too, but um, if you go to the Montgomery County Public Schools homepage, Office of Resolution and Compliance, um, sorry, I said that really fast. They, uh, on, on the page, it talks about facilitated um, IEPs. It's also in the parent um, procedural. procedural rights that they hand you at every single meeting, or they should at least give you at every single meeting. But Donna and I will get the information and can put that um, and, and can get that out to everyone as well. Um, just a follow up to that. Can you um, briefly define what that means? Sure, the facilitated IEP. Mm -hmm. So you can request a facilitated IEP and under law, they have to grant you a facilitated IEP. It's a free service. It's done, um, I think it's the Maryland Mediation Group. I can't remember the exact name. They're all um, trained facilitators who, who volunteer their time. Mm -hmm. and, and the ones we've worked with have been great. Yeah, yes. And they will come to the meeting. They will arrange the meeting and they will be the liaison. They'll, they'll talk to the parent, okay, why why do you feel a need to have the meeting facilitated? And it might just be no reason it's my first IEP and I just want to make sure everything yeah. goes smoothly. In fact, the facilitators we talk to believe that every IEP should be facilitated. Um, so they're 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 just neutral. They will produce an agenda, mm -hmm. they will ask clarifying questions. Mm -hmm. I think that their favorite phrase is, so Stacy, I think I heard you say that's that's the phrase that they say over and over again. They say that to the parent team, they say it to the advocates, they say it to the school team. It just really helps to keep the flow going. Okay, thank you. Sure. The next question, um, this parent's child is in a special education three-year-old program, so uh, preschool. Mm -hmm. I'm at a she says, I'm at a loss for what data I should be asking for since there isn't any student work that can be given to me. I feel like I can only rely on what they tell me, but there's no way for me to verify it. So there should be a lot of data. They should be taking a lot of data. A, a three-year-old is doing um, many activities in a program. There should They should be able to, to talk to you about speech and language. How is that mm -hmm. coming along? About OT, about PT, about movement, about so socialization, about parallel play. But because you're saying because you don't have like a physical worksheet coming home because um, they're not maybe writing a worksheet, but I think you like video like you can even video i mean you know like if you gave permission like to i would video say or, i would um, say more to exercise your right and ask for an observation yeah, and yeah. go in and and, and watch and watch mm -hmm. your child um or have an outside evaluator observe right. if that's going to um um you know if, if that'll throw throw your right. child off but there is certainly a lot of data that can be collected at three years old okay thank you and the next okay. question is about high school. I have a high school kid and have had at least six teachers who refuse to teach to the IEP. It's so frustrating and no support from the case manager. Um, just a note. Bye. Um, yes. Well, they can't refuse to to teach the IEP to to the IEP um, because the IEP is a legal document. Um, in a case like that. I would I would not sit around and bother with a case manager. A lot of times the case managers are juggling uh, a lot because they're not just case. Uh, they, they also teach classes and they have many students and that's not an excuse, trust me. But I would go to the resource teacher at the school, what's called the RITC, um, the resource teacher for special education, I would start there. I would also call the school and find out who the administrator the is principal, yes. that oversee and also who oversees the special education program at the school. Mm -hmm. And let's, you know, Donna and I having been administrators, um, call central office. <laughs> they 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 will call the school and 
I'm, I don't know that you'll get traction, but your voice will be heard. Okay. Um, and call an IEP meeting. Okay. Stacy, she um, actually did say that she has made a, a complaint with the compliance office and she, no one has contacted her. Um, oh my God. Yeah. So that's, there, that's kind of, yeah. That's she probably, what did she do? So she should contact Brenda Brown. Yeah. Yeah, Bre Brenda is very responsive, and she is the um, assistant to Diana Wiles, who's yeah. the acting special ed superintendent. Brenda is very responsive. Um, every time we we contact her, she she responds right, right away. And I would make sure I had um, my evidence, I guess, you know, because it can be a, like a your word against my word kind of thing. So the more that's why we tell parents collect, keep collecting these samples, and dot, and if you've emailed somebody and they haven't emailed you back, or you know, or just keep your email um, files and your email chains, um, because you know, it, most likely I'm thinking one of the things that he teacher may be refusing to do is are the you know the accommodations. Right. So, you know, um, keep a list of what's not being offered, what, what accommodations aren't being yeah. offered. And um, and I, I, I always say, too, I mean, in the world of computers, it's great. You can have a Google Drive, you can have a folder, you can put your child's stuff in it. But start a notebook mm -hmm. and every email, everything yes. you get, just throw in that notebook. I used to take notebooks this high, five of them to all of my daughter's IEPs. Um, you know, that's all, all your evidence. You can put it into mm -hmm. sections. Um, and as far as the accommodations and modifications, the sub aids and services, this is something that Donna and I recently were talking to, um, to, uh, MCPS administration about that really, um, they should have a bank of modified assignments, right? Like the history curriculum, whether you're in Germantown or, you know, um, Bethesda is the same curriculum. So a lot of kids need sentence starters. A lot of kids need graphic organizers. Honestly, these things should start being um, either embedded in the curriculum or there should be someone who is um, working to modify these and then sharing them right. with students right. who 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 need it. And they can be changed even more individualized, but it, there should be at least a start. A you scaffold know, a, for it. A start for it. Um, yes. Yeah, and even if you're not having, and even if everything is fine and you love it the way everything is going, still keep those, keep that student work in a notebook or still keep all of those that work because it's just, yeah. yeah. And and I want to say too, um, you know, this is in no way, um, I don't want you to think we're on here plugging our business. That's not what Donna. We're bashing Montgomery yeah, County yeah. or not, or any we're, county yeah. or any system. But um, it's, a, it's, it's a it, difficult job. It's it is. But but Donna and I are happy to talk to anybody at any time. You know, just call us. We're, we, we, we're not going to charge you for it. We're happy to help you navigate. Um, as a parent of a child with a strong IEP, I I, I know the, the frustration. So right. please just reach out to us. We'll give right. you our information and we can give you um, some tips on, right. on how to move but, forward. And also, I know, you know, being, a, I know the challenges in a school system and you just want your your school team to be open and receptive to change and to feedback because I, i'll i'll never forget you know my first couple years first second year um at the school we we needed some growth in writing the ieps you know and and implementing them and and uh, an advocate i couldn't couldn't tell you the name because i forget but an advocate came in and was respectful but really showed us and i'm like after she she left i remember telling the team look we're, we're going to clean this up we're going to fix this and we did and i'm so proud i mean I, I love my team i i they they were an excellent team but it's because you have a spirit of of learning and growth and don't be afraid to um you mean, I know you, you can be respectful at a meeting, but you can also share your concerns in a respectful way. So don't Absolutely. ever don't ever be afraid to do that. And don't be afraid that there'll be repercussions. That's what we hear. Oh, but if yes. I do this, they won't like my child. Well, no, they're professionals. They're going to, you know, they may close the door and say something about you or whatever, but they're not going to, they're, they're, you know, hopefully they'll fix whatever needs to be fixed and they, they won't take it out on you. All right. Great. That was a long answer. So, I, okay. I um I just want to be aware of the time. I know right. more okay. too, so perhaps we can um take more questions uh, uh, later. 
Okay. okay. All right. So now we're going to go into the beautiful um, IEP itself. And this is the IEP cover page. And a lot of times this gets glossed over and it shouldn't. First thing that we tell all parents now is that you want to record your meetings. So what does that mean? <laughs> Schools will tell you that they don't have the ability to record. They're not allowed to record. That is not true. The law is that you can record a meeting, but but whoever wants to turn off their video may do so. Those recorded meetings are really important, especially when it comes to receiving the notes or the prior written notice from the IEP. Many times we will say X, Y, and Z happened and a team will say, that's not, that's not the way we saw it. We'll go back to the tape. And we have transcribed in many meetings, you really want those tapes. Now, the other part of it is lately, a lot of times schools will say they're unable to record. They don't have a record button. They have to just switch to a different platform. Some schools will ask if they record that you record your own in case anything happens to their recording. But that recording um, is actually supposed to be shared with you and it's supposed to be part of the child's confidential file. So. It's I, that to me is one of the best things that you can do is have that um, recorded. And also at the end of each meeting or at the end of the meeting, please ask for a review of the action steps because so often, and this is with any meeting, you know, you, it's like, okay, gotta go, it's time to go. And then you, but you need to stop a few minutes early and say, okay, can we review the, the things that we've agreed upon? Like what 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 have we agreed upon? Um, and then maybe what what's also gonna be in PWN or what's gonna be in PWN for disagreement. So just, yeah. And then if we look at this page, you want to make sure that all the information is correct. If both parents' names, if there are two parents, that the emails are there, everything on this page should be correct, including the dates of the meetings, the annual review date. And this statement needs to be on there, that you have received your, your copy of your procedural safeguards and parental rights document. Also, if you go down um, and you skip all, all these dates, this is the most important area where it says area affected by disability. Whatever is written here. So in other words, academic math problem solving has to have a present level, has to have a goal or sub aid and service. Mm -hmm. Academic reading comprehension, the same. All of these must have present levels associated with them. Is there any question directly related to the cover page? Okay. Melanie, if anything comes through directly related. I'll, I'll let you know. Thank you. Right All right. So now we have um, the, this page isn't going to change. Once it changes um, every three years, but this is the initial eligibility data. So when your child was found eligible, these are the areas that they were found eligible in. And this is what supports the decision. Um, this is a really good team. If you notice, they have parent input first, then they have student input, then they have the progress reports. Those are the quarterlies. They have teacher reports. There was a neuropsych done. There's report card data assignments and assessments, map R and map M data. This team, um, the parents had had their academic therapists um, give input. So there's input from tutors in the present levels. Um, there's a letter from um, the DBT Center of Greater Washington, which does counseling. There's uh, the, the report form from related service providers. There's attendance data. There's um, the, the parent report and uh, another statement made by a professional at the meeting. Um, the school psychologist did a review of the confidential file. And I have to I have to stop here for one second. It's not on our notes, but I think this is really important. At many meetings, the school psychologist comes in and reports out on a private report, but they haven't really read the private report. They're just skimming it and, and kind of um, telling it as they go, you have to make sure that you know that that private report. If you don't understand the um, neuropsychological or, or your psychoeducational assessments, 
talk to someone who can help you with that. A lot of times things are glossed over because there's so much information in those reports. And can I put a plug in for when, when you when you um, get get the report from your private you know provider or private um, physician, ask them to put in there like they'll say um, the need that your child's needs, but ask them to put in there how, what would this look like in the in the classroom if my child has a working memory deficit. Okay, ask them what would it look like? What would the teacher see or how would this play out in the classroom? Because that's that helps teachers as well, you know, because the, the psychologists report visual motor um, concerns, um, working memory, um, and, and teachers don't know, okay, that, that they don't understand that, but if you said, and it's going to look like this in the classroom, and I don't, you know, I think that, and I don't, I rarely see that on psychological, yeah. um, but that would be something to ask your private person to do, but also um, when you're hearing from the school psychologist, ask, okay, so what would that look like in the classroom? And then that was going to help the teacher as well, you know, and anybody who, who who's working with you, they're going to, that's going to help them, right? Right. And also um, if your school, sorry, if your private evaluator will come, have them come to the meeting. Um, they can normally, I've seen it, a sway a team many times. Uh, and it's just great to have, um, you know, another professional there. But we do want to say, too, that I think in, uh, there's only been one time that we've had a school not take an outside evaluation. But just because your outside evaluator says that your child has this, this, and this, the school system does not have to accept that. The school system can say, sorry, we don't see any evidence of that in, in the school setting. And that's where it gets a little dicey. Um, does anyone have questions on this page? I see a lot of questions in the chat, but I don't know if they're um, if they have to do with this specific page or not. Donna and I are happy to stay after the the, the given time and talk to you know and answer any questions. I, I would keep going. Um, okay, there are, there are questions, but um, not specific to that page. Okay, okay. and then. Um, is the child eligible as a student with a disability? Yes. Sometimes we see a one line here, document basis for decision. The child is eligible because they have ADHD. Right. I mean, we see all kinds of crazy things. Right. It needs to be well spelled out why your child is um, has a disability and what and what the um, data is to prove that disability right. and then the what what the code is and this code is other health impairments and other health impairments because if you look um, up here it says other health impairments because diagnosed with ADHD combined type impacts executive functioning deficits in working memory cognitive flexibility and impulse control impacts mm -hmm. written language expression struggles with task initi initiation and pervasiveness misses details especially when passages are long and complex right uh, takes medication for ad also has generalized anxiety disorder has a specific learning disability mm -hmm. i mean it goes on and on right the social emotional needs mm -hmm. but it states them all so right. if i were to pick this up yes i was going to say that's yeah anybody anybody picking up this document now could get a good picture of the what the why and the how of this student right needs and um, without because they're not at this meeting they're not hearing this rich discussion they don't see you know all the document, all the, the reports. And I think it's also to note, a good to note that we're showing you a, a, a well-written IEP. So this is an example of what it would look like, a, a well-written IEP. We, we've seen them all. Donna, Stacey, um, there is a question about coding. Um, this person is asking, uh, this person says, I'm really confused regarding the main disability code. Why is it important? For example, What's the, is there a difference regarding having a main code as speech, I assume speech disability versus autism? Well, that's a big lengthy discussion. Yes, of course, two very different um, ser services. So speech is the only related service that you can get an IEP for, mm -hmm. sp specifically On its own. just for speech, right? So, um, if there is a speech IEP though, they can put in other goals. Once you have an IEP, you can put in other areas of need. 
the difference in coding for well, you, because you can have uh, you can have an autism an autism code and also get SLP service. Oh yeah, you would. All right. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of a lot of our clients prefer the autism code because it gets you more through um, insurance through private insurance. But if you have, let's say, ADHD, you have autism, you have um, a speech and language disorder, you have OT, then then you're OHI, right? Um, O OHI is kind of like the umbrella. It's like when there are many disabilities. Um, um, and, and one doesn't really. Um, right. And you don't know which one is the most impactful, although mm -hmm. sometimes you you do. I don't know if that answered your right. question, but the code does matter. Yes. Right. And it's it's really you have to really be in that conversation and hear how, you know, hear the data that they have that you have to, to warrant one or the other. So um, it isn't. You can't just say one's better than the other. So we're going to move on now to um, the present levels of um, academic achievement and functional performance. If you take anything else away from this page and this document, on this page, you know that you need three, you need at least three sources. That's rule of thumb, three sources of data points. Sometimes we'll see teacher observations and that's it. Mm -hmm. No, you need to have. Um, I mean, th and these are just some of the sources that you can have grades, assignments and assessments, teacher reports, and quarterly progress updates. Can I put a plug in for Absolutely. grades for, for, grade for a second? And yes. me, until grades get really standardized and, and clear and consistent, and when, I shouldn't say this, but sometimes grades are meaningless, right? So if you have a reading comprehension present level and one, and your only data point or one of your data points is A on a or B or C on a report card, that tells you nothing, right? So, and if they give you like, if they give you a unit test, well, that's um, yeah, like, um, you know, uh, world history, 66%. Okay, fine. But where in that world history test were you assessing um, reading, comp reading comprehension or, or in particular, if this child had a reading goal for inference, and I could come back to that, but, or determining main idea or something or analyzing analogies or something, what, you know, you need to, tease that out. So yeah, they got a 66%, but every inferencing test question out on it, they got correct or whatever. So don't just look, sometimes teams, you'll see a bunch of data and you think, wow, that's a good IP. Well, what does the data say? The data needs to inform you on progress on an area of need. And if there's already an IEP, an area of the goal. Right. And also a lot of times we see homework assignments. Homework assignments should not be um, as a data source on an IEP. So you can see here that um, this IEP has the secondary teacher reports. Um, it discusses the concerns or no concerns of the teacher towards that reading comprehension present level. And again, this just talks about what th this student benefits from using, um, the types of sub aids and services that the student uses. Oh, that's right. And the I, ones that they don't. And use. that for the person who was questioning about n not having any, um, nobody's uh, following the teachers refusing to implement the IEP. Well, right here on the present levels, when the teacher gives the present level, if there's a supplementary aid on the IEP, the teacher has to, you know, say which ones he or she is using and are they working or not, because that's how you get data on whether you need to add another one or maybe you need to take it off. Maybe there's a supplementary aid on there that they're not using, so why put it on there, right? So this should have data about implementing the the the, um, in, the accommodations just as much as the progress and right. performance. And again, you should have student work samples, um, especially you know in the high school. It's a little bit easier middle and high school. Although I I know elementary too has um, has uh, the the Google Classroom and the Docs. I mean you can access your child's. Um, MCPS number and see all of, of the documents, but uh, you know, you should always have student work. There should always be student work. And that should also, this should reflect what it is you're also seeing um, come homes. You wanna right. move to the next slide yeah. for a second. Okay, so this is again, just more on the present. Uh, this is all one present level talks about the areas of strength for the reading comprehension and the areas of need. The areas of need are what will drive your goals and objectives and your supplemental aids and services. 
So that's really important. And I know we're going fast. I'm just because I'm just being cognizant yeah. of, of the time and want to make sure that we just, can we'll answer another. questions. But we do want to talk about the trend chart. Um, the trend charts are they're probably a year or two old, and a lot of schools do not, a lot of teams do not fill them out. Or know how to fill them out. Or know how to fill them out. But you want them filled out so that they show instructional performance levels. And if there has been a change in those performance levels, if there's been a drop in those performance levels, it's really supposed to be a trend chart. So this one is not done correctly. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Um, it, yeah. It needs to be two years if they have two years worth of data. Yes. And they and they should, unless you're um, in. And this is new. And the teachers, I think, are, were just trained on it. But it is, you know, it's there. All right. Um, and again, you're going to look for trends and patterns of progress or patterns of, of not progress. Now, the other thing is, too, once you look at that reading comprehension goal, you then want to go into the IEP and see, did your child meet that goal for in the, the, in the it, yeah, the current goal. So the goal that they're working on for reading comprehension on the current IEP, did they meet it? And then you want to go to the new reading comprehension goal. Is it is it new or is it the same one? As we said before, and again, I hold very firm to this, and it's something to know most of the time. Goals are not mastered and new ones are um, developed. And I, sometimes I'm, I'm at a complete loss to understand that. Yes. Okay. So do we have any, um, we can stop and ask questions now before we get into assistive technology, accessibility features, and sub aids. And that's big rock number two. So we're ready for big, big rock number two. Big rock number one was a boulder. Yeah. In, in terms of big rock number one, um, going back to, the very first page does if if it does not say all the things that you suggested what is our next step so when when we're working with a client donna and i do a review of every iep and we send what we call a, a reactions page and certainly a parent can do that too it, you just send an email and you say or you highlight all the things on the iep that are incorrect but I like to have everything in writing. So you would want to write to whoever gave you the draft IEP, send it back and say, I'd like to, you know, have this, this, and this filled in. A lot of times they will tell you it's it's populated after the meeting. That is true of some of the um information on page one, but not all. Right. And you are you have common sense. I mean, it's not really, you just want to make sure that if it says report card grade B and it's under reading comprehension that, or if it says um, a list of test results and there's no, um, you know, you don't know what they mean, just write back, you know, you can just, you know, what I see, what do these grades mean? Where, where was the goal area um, tested in these test scores? You know, um, it's just, you're just asking for, you just want a clear picture of where your child is regarding the goal. So you can just, you know, just write and ask for more, for more clarity on that. Um, you and then ask, ask for the work samples too. Yeah. You can yeah. ask for clarity on any piece of the IEP, uh, right? And, and, mm -hmm. Quite honestly, you should. If you don't understand it, right. continue to ask questions. And that's why we say this should not, this should be something that anybody can pick up and understand. And sometimes it's written like, whoa, you need to. Yeah. I say in, in you know, please, if, you know, in, in regular speak, I should be able to know if my child's making progress on a goal or and what the um, areas of need are. Just, you know, um, right. It should it, it should be that. You shouldn't need to have. You know, somebody uh, to bring somebody with you to interpret it for you in that respect. I'm just going to interrupt for one second to just remind you if you could, presenters, um, just slow down a little bit for our interpreter. Sure. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. That'll be <laughs> thanks. That, that's our goal. All right. So we'll move right. into the next um, big rock. Or, or can can we um, can we just ask a few questions? Um, mm -hmm. Sure. About. Um, Let's see. Uh, the next question is, hello, I'd like to know about <clears throat> the insurances that cover all the programs. Um, I'm not sure if there's. Yeah, so some insurances, it depends on your insurance and it also depends on what on what your um, disability code is. But that would be um, oftentimes 
speech and language, OT, PT, those might, might be covered. So you need to check with your insurance. Um, and also um, evaluations, neuropsych um, evaluations um, are often covered, but you have to go to a specific provider like Children's National, Kennedy Krieger, um, JESA, the, those all um, take insurance for private testing. And then if you can um, answer this other question there, uh, the question is, please, where can I get in touch with an education lawyer? I've had many problems with my son. Um, can someone help me? Thank you. For an education lawyer? Mm -hmm. um, well, I, I don't, I know many. I don't know that I want, if it's okay to promote on, on, um, on here, but you can also go to the um, uh, MSDE website and they list education lawyers. And also, if you have a complaint, you can always call MSDE. I have actually found them helpful. Um, so you can call and speak to someone in the special education department, tell them your complaint. They don't work for the you know, they don't work for MCPS. Um, I have found, like I said, I found them to be very helpful, but you can Google special education lawyers in Montgomery County. And, and I know um, a bunch come up. And, and briefly, can you, um, someone is asking also, what is, how do you know if you need an advocate versus an education attorney? What are the... Okay, so um, every education attorney will ask you if you've had an advocate because they will tell you that they are not the experts in the in, in the field itself. So for instance, we are expert witnesses for clients who have come to us and then have gone on to um, hire a lawyer or lawyers will will come to us and say, can you, you know, can you be an expert witness for this case? Here is here's all the, the documentation. But the lawyers like for you to have, in fact, I don't really know any lawyer. I'm sure there are lawyers out there who will take you without an educational advocate, but most of the time it's the advocate first. I mean, the attorneys are really expensive, right? And um, the, there's also mediation, which we really didn't get into. Right, that's a whole nother. There's yeah. levels of intervention, you know, it, it all depends on you. You know, if you it, there's levels of interventions that you can go through, um, you know, a facilitative um, meeting, mediation, to process, due process is, is, is with, with, with the, the lawyers. lawyers. Right. So you can, it's like, you know, levels, you can go to zero to 60 in a, in, 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 a, go, second, in a second, right. you can go right to a lawyer or you can go in between, but, and, and there is, a, you can have all those things happening too. Once you engage a lawyer, it, it doesn't stop because you have a lawyer, but I will say, um, mediation we've had great mediations and we've had not so great mediations and we've had the school system deny mediation and tell a parent they're not going to mediate you can go right to due process so it really depends on the school team um and and really um how much they're willing to collaborate and then one question about present levels um this this sounds like um, a teacher report. Um, the question is, my IEP contains several narratives written by my son's teacher that discuss his bad behaviors in class and, in my opinion, effectively demonize him. I strongly feel oh. the narratives do not belong in an IEP. Can I tell the team that, that and have them removed? My son has autism and I feel these narratives Okay, that it's that's a repeat. Right. His autism is currently diagnosed and has been untreated. So there shouldn't be anything subjective right. in those present right. levels. Like mm -hmm. like we see a lot. Johnny is so nice and he works so hard. What does that tell me about academic performance or about performance towards the or like goal? And even some verbs like Johnny refuses yes. to do. You know. Johnny refuses to do his work or refuses to fight, whatever. So that just that word refuses is loaded, you know? So um, narratives can be on that, you know, they, the teacher report, but they have to be written in a, in a very, uh, you know, objective way um, that that's not judgmental. Right. And um, yeah, so that, that, 
I, I, and it has to be supported with data. Right? Yes. And I, there have been many times that we have been in a meeting that we've asked for um, subjective um, sub subjective observations to, to, uh, to be taken out. And yes, you can ask for it to be taken out, especially if there's an underlying um, reason and the whole team is aware of that reason. So, mm -hmm. okay, so, so your son, daughter is having bad behavior. What is the school doing right. to help correct that? Well, and what is the root cause of the behavior mm -hmm. too? You know, because oftentimes we see he does this or she, he or she does this, this, and this, but it's never, and, you know, we've tried th this these are the interventions that we've tried with this with this effect and whatever um so it, it is it, it 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 it's like blaming the child and we see that more and more where where the well, onus yeah yeah frustration and, frustration and, and on onus is being put on the child and that's not what an IEP uh, should be and doing. you know what to be honest with you <laughs> if I I would I would share that um I would go right to the principal and that's me because as a former principal I mean that's something that I would want to know um, if because that's something that would, would be training for me, you know, like how to write, a how to write. Sentence. Yeah. Or even, you know, even emails, you have to be careful what you write back in an email, you know, and I would I would help teachers with that. But that's something that um, that's a systemic issue, not just the um, special ed that I, I would share that with the principal and, and say, is this what is this your vision of, of parent communication, what, what parent communication should be? OK, and then. It in relation to trying to um, get a diagnosis code, um, what if this is your child's first IEP? Um, how would you have any data points? Would you use a previous um, ASD diagnosis or other assessments like speech or OT? Yes, and when, when you go to a screening, the, the team will say, Okay, well, do we suspect that there's a presence of a disability? And if they do, then they're going to um, they're going to request uh, more data, and they're going to do testing, right? If you already have testing, you want to send that in beforehand. If you have any kind of um, speech and language reports, anything from from the pediatrician, um, any letters from various doctors, any evaluations, all that gets sent in beforehand. But if you go to the team and the team says, yes, we suspect there may be a disability, we'd like to do testing, then, then they're going to um, kind of fill in those testing gaps for the data you don't have. But don't um, undermine the data that comes right from the classroom right. and right from the teachers. That's really important. Right, because that's what would be on the initial IEP as well. Right. And in each area. Yes. And yeah. Montgomery County is really good about training their teachers to collect data. There's also, um, depending on the grade level, there's MAP M and MAP R scores. There are various um, they, there are various checkpoints. Every school that I know of has teacher talks where they're talking about children. So if it is a teacher who has referred your your child, then they have um, a lot of data probably collected. If you are referring your child, then you also you know it should be on, on you to bring the the private the thing. yeah the private but no, the, not necessarily the yeah. private but bring bring your data that has led you to to suspect that there's a disability yeah okay I yeah. just see all the chat yeah. questions just going crazy yes I know um let's see um and then in the realm of evaluations someone is asking if a neuro test is the same as a psychological test no, so a psychological is not as comprehensive as a right. neuropsychological. A neuropsychological is going to really delve deep into how the brain works, and it is able to be more specific and pinpoint more areas of, of need. I So here's my rule of thumb. If I always say, if you can get a neuropsych, get a neuropsych. Mm -hmm. um, I it's great information mm -hmm. um, about your child. It's actually fabulous information. And like we've said, so, um, many insurances will cover it if you go to um, a, a hospital to do it or around mm -hmm. here, Jessa or, um, you know, Kennedy Krieger. Um, but it, but there there is a difference. It's a much more in-depth assessment. If the school system does it, and I will tell you this, um, 
they're testing a lot of kids. Some of the reports we see are really good. Some are not so great. And the school system will never make a recommendation as to what they, as to what disability, they won't diagnose and put right. the disability code right. where neuropsychologists, uh, right. I will tell you some of them. And they won't recommend special, they'll, they'll right. leave it up to a team yes. decision. It'll be a team decision. will say in the recommendations, re we recommend an IEP for specialized instruction. Um, and those that, those recommendations from the neuropsych are so in depth. They're they're awesome. Um, where you don't get as many, you won't get you'll get broad strokes for uh, you know right and psychological. And an outside provider can say you know needs an evidence based yeah. research you know in intervention um, needs um, a, you know a. a an evaluation for speech and language should be done, an OT evaluation should be done, right. needs a quiet space, needs right. a trusted adult. They can specify that where, where the school system will not. They're okay. more, well, the recommendations are more broad. Yeah. I think we need to move on, but there is a question that I think um, pertains to your next section. Uh, this person wants you to give examples of supplementary services. Oh, perfect. oh we're going to do oh, that. Yeah, that was that person okay. was our plant. That was our water the plant. Okay, good job. So okay. we're going to ask this big rock number three. Yeah, and we're going to we're going to try to go through it quickly. Assistive technology um, is any device or piece of equipment or product that is used to increase, maintain, or improve the functional capabilities of a child with a disability. There are examples of high tech and low tech word processing, word prediction, all of that, right? That's that's the computer that's more high tech. Magnifiers for, for large print, magnifying glass, more low tech. A pencil grip is assistive technology. Communication boards, symbol making software, a go talk, all of that is assistive technology. And if you have a child who you feel um, would benefit from certain um, technologies that maybe they're not trained in or don't know how to use, or maybe your child has a lot of difficulty with writing and getting their ideas down on paper, then you should ask for a Hyatt consult. A Hyatt, the Hyatt team is part of MDPS. They will come in and evaluate your child and say, you know what, this child needs Google Read and Write. Um, this child needs to have um, a touchscreen computer, right? Whatever it is, they will train the school team on how to use it. They will train the child how to use it mm -hmm. and the parent how to right. use it. So it's it's a great resource right. that's kind of a well-kept secret. Right. And they don't they won't work with your child throughout the year, whatever, but it's just a, you know, they'll support the classroom. the classroom. And this is their website. Yes. And again, I know we have lots of websites that we have here. Um, then we're going to talk a little bit about the Interact team. And the Interact team, um, as you can see up top, it's made up of speech and language pathologists, occupational therapists, physical therapists, special education, special educators, and technical support assistants. And that team collaborates um, to support the to support the staff, right, with students who have significant communication um, disabilities. So um, non-speaking non -speaking, um, or se severely limited in speech, written output they're not able to, to, to produce, and it exceeds the level of resources that are available at the school. So this yeah. team comes in. It's a great team. Yes, very... Donna knows it very well because it, she mm -hmm. had um, uh, uh, a community based, yeah, at she had school. a school community based unit um, yeah. as principal. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you have a child who's in a school community uh, base, um, you want to ask about the Interact team. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. Really important. That that's a really that's a wonderful team. Right. Um, okay, so here we go. This is just the this is the assistive technology page um, on the IEP, and we just put this in to show you that um, you know how it's documented that this student there's a, there's these, these this gets confusing very confusing. very it's like double negatives and whatever but this student bottom line this student does require at devices and most of our students will because right, of the word, word, process. word processor so most of the time and that's going to be checked and if they tell you well everyone gets a word processor you don't right. care what everyone gets if you move someplace else somebody <laughs> else might and then um, but they do not require at services now at services would be interact like or hyatt or something like you know that um 
but um, you could ask for it. Like, let's say you're at the meeting and you say, wait a minute, I, I want a Hyatt consult. Well, then they would type in there that they're, they're asking for a Hyatt consult. Um, and Hi the Hyatt team is great as well. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So here are features. These, the first one is, and I know we got to get to those updates and services. So because these are accommodations. So the first one is features for all students. That means that it's just good practice. Uh, anyone can can have have those whether they have an IEP or not. Okay. So then the next ones are accessibility features. Okay. And the uh, this is for um for Testing. testing. So we're, we're just, uh, you know, small group, you might have small group, um, along with uh, a yeah. small group or frequent, break. frequent breaks or, you know, reduced distractions, whatever. So we'll, we'll... now here's the um, supplementary aids and services. And these are, the, this is the how, right? Um, and these are the accommodations and modifications to the curriculum that enable students with disabilities to access the curriculum. So this is, if you go back to that visual we showed you, this was the leveling the playing field. And, um, these are the supports. So you can get, you have supports in um, environmental needs. Maybe um, you need preferential seating. There could be supports. Um, this was a new and interesting one um, that I've never seen, but on, a, on an IEP, but you can have listed in there staff training on, you know, we had a student with a Medical, a medical diagnosis with a certain disorder that we had asked the teachers to watch these bit. The parents had these great videos on how to specifically teach math to this student or these students. And, you know, we got fault. I don't think they you know, did it, but that could be written as a supplementary aid, which was and this was right from the law. Um, so th these are the different um, kinds of adaptations you can have. Um, they can adapt the material, the presentation. They can adapt um, the testing, you know, accommodations, social interaction adaptions, um, special equipment. So we're going to show you an example. We're kind of going through this quickly, but here's an example, and this is exactly what it looks like. This is the way it's laid out on an IEP. But if you see, the first one says it's nature of service. So what's the service? Okay, so the service is to provide step-by-step -step instruction to teach new skills. Okay, so that's the that's the adaptation or the service. The frequency is daily. So what they might say something like as needed yeah, or, or once a week that. or frequently or, or as whatever. determined by yes. by the teacher. Yes. If if it needs to be daily, yes. if you think that is something that is needed right. every single day, yes. have them put in jail. Most, yeah, most of these are because it's good teaching. Um the next one is the beginning. Can date. I just um, interrupt just, a second? Um this is Sue Heisler sure. again. Hi Sue. Um, hi. I just I know you're feeling pressed for time, but please slow down. Oh, slow down. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the, the next section are the times. Just watch the times because sometimes there's a mistake, you know, on the dates. Um, now, the last part is the, the next piece is the provider. So check to see that the special education teacher is on all of as a provider. Check to see that the general education teacher is always a provider. We talked about that. They are as much a part of this as a special ed teacher. Um, instructional assistant. Um, would be part of it. And sometimes if it's a fine motor goal, you'd need the OT. If it's a speech, you'd need the SLP, whatever. And sometimes you need the counselor. Yeah. Even though counselors are very adverse to being on the IEP, there is nothing that says that they cannot be. Right. Especially if it says um, trusted adult. Or smart lunch bunch. Or lunch bunch or, or social skills. Right. Now here's, the, here's where the rubber meets the road. We always, the big, picture we're saying is clarity, clarity, understanding so that we all know what it looks like. So in the clarified location and manner, oftentimes we just see throughout the day in all subjects. That's what it says. Look at the difference here. This one says you're going to give step-by-step -step directions and it gives an example. It gives an example of the strategy and it tells you why, you know, why you're doing it. So again, this is so somebody who's picking up this this um, document will have a, a better understanding. Um, this we're just going to read the next one because that you get this a lot. Strategies to sustain attention, okay. obviously daily, you know, um, providers, special ed teachers, so on. But look at the and we have examples here because you know what does it what does that mean? Strategies to sustain attention. You don't know what you may not know what it means, and you need to know because you need to know if they're doing it, and then it helps the teacher. And so there's some examples. And it, you can also put an IE and okay. explain what you want to see for each nature of service. Um, for our clients, often Donna, and, or I will make up 
um, a sheet uh -huh. that says, this is the SUP aid and service. This is what it looks like in the classroom. Right. These are examples of, of how you can incorporate right. it and use that to also take data. Yeah. Well, we've done that. We did that with a um, couple parents where after the IEP was done, the parent had some, you know, I don't understand this. So we made a sec second meeting. It wasn't an IEP meeting. It was just a meeting with the class, with the special ed and the classroom teacher. And we had that chart and we just walked it through. Um, okay, what does it mean? Please tell the parent, explain to us, what does it mean to um, sustain attention? So then the parent was able to take notes and really ask questions and understand, because you're not going to be able to do that in this IEP meeting. That's what we're saying that, you know, you can ask for as many meetings just for even clarification. So, um, yeah, we'll skip that. We'll skip the next, next one. one. For, yeah. Can I, now, can, can can I ask three. one question? Um, sure. When they say location and manner, M-A-N-O-R, do they mean manner, M-A-N-N-E-R? Oh, that may have been a mistake on us. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. It's not the manor building. Oh my gosh! Did <laughs> thank you. Catch us? Okay. Thank you. It's it's the manner. It's the manner in which it was implemented. Correct. We're yeah. sorry. Yeah, you're no, calling us okay. out here. Thank you. So. No, but thank you. See, that's that's good <laughs> yeah. feedback. Thank you very much. Um, I can't blame right. it on our husband who video. No. He <laughs> who, 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 who Wait. Opened. Now I lost my place because I was trying to to, um, to go back. It's an um go up. Oh, here. How am I gonna? And then um just. Going back to assistive technology, there's a parent here who says, my son is four and I've been trying to get him to have a GoTalk or high technology tablet, but I don't have anything yet in his private therapy. Um, does he, how can I access this? So That's a good internet, yeah. internet question. Yeah. yeah, so he doesn't need to have it in his private therapy. Right. Um, if he is being served, um, I mean, I'm assuming he's four, he's not in, um, in elementary school yet, maybe infants and toddlers, but that's something that certainly Interact could help with. Right, because they serve a student three to 21. So yeah, have the, um, you know, reach out to the Interact team. So they, okay, so they need to contact the Interact team. And then- Well, the team in terms of, of, if they're four, they, they, they wanna to go to Child Find. Right, ask, yeah, that's the, ask the Child Find. Okay, and then um, in regards to Hyatt consults, can non-publics get a Hyatt consult? I believe so, but you'd need to go through the private and religious school office, the if MCPS. They have a service plan, if they had a service yeah, plan. It, yes, right? that's true. If, if, if you have service. an, so this is an interesting um, piece as well. You can be in a private school and have an IEP. In fact, I highly recommend it because then they take the IEP at the private school and they turn it into a service plan. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm probably going to let the cat out of the bag here when I also say that the school system, I don't know what it is this year, but in years past, has given funds for tutoring um, for people on their approved list um, for private school parents. As I know it, in the past, it's been between 2000 and 3000 a year. But sorry, you didn't hear that from me. But anyway, and maybe go on to yeah, yeah, it is a first come first serve. But they had, I mean, I had a client who applied in like March one year, and they still had the funds. It's it's kind of a very well kept secret that obviously now isn't so well kept. And also, if you do get an IEP through the school system and you qualify for speech and language or OT and PT, the right. school system provides it. Yes. Any other questions related to that? Um, if a child receives an electronic device um, from AT, does that follow them home or are you responsible for obtaining it if you want a carryover at home? Nope, they should think it follows them home. <laughs> yeah, the kids are bringing their um, um, Chromebooks home too, yeah. right? So, yeah. yeah, yeah. If they have an AT device, the parent should be trained on how to right. use it and it should follow them home. And right. we have one client now who um, is working with the school to make sure that what's on the go talk right. um, is, is being reinforced right. at home. That's the, that's the whole issue of communication. There were things, and this is a student who is a non-speaking, pretty impacted young young guy. And he, um, he what's being done at school is not being 
shared for home. So the again, the arrows are not going in the same place. Mom doesn't know, like you know, the using the board maker picture. The mom doesn't know the symbols that he's using. Um, mom doesn't know how many fields there are on the, you know, in the in the frame in the frames in the the go talk. It's um there's no communication at all. So it's like learning a language going to class and learning a language in, in a class, but then never going home or never using it, you know, applying it. So it's just, it's just not effective. So we're working with the school actually to build those processes of that communication. But yes, that, those should be coming home and the parents should be trained on how to use it. And that's where that interact office can help as well. All right. I know it's at it's 830, but there is another um, assistive technology question. Has one device been proven to be more helpful to speech delay to a speech delay child receptive for their receptive and expressive speech delay? My school only gives my son a book pod um, and refuses tablet. Book pod? I'm, oh, I'm and refuse what the book pod and I book pod. And we're yeah, I'm not it. familiar yeah. with that. Um, so, you know, without knowing the student, it would be really hard to say, but that's a great time for you to say, I'd like a high consult, right? I, you can request a high consult as a parent, and quite frankly, you should. Now, I know that it's 830 and we haven't gone through goals and objectives, but we are doing on April 18th. Is that what we said? Yeah, to? April 18th. We're doing a whole... Um, a whole training on goals and objectives. Um, I would just like to hit services real quick. And then if anyone wants to stay after, we are happy to, to, to stay on and answer any questions. So if you, if we just, yeah, uh, we're, we're going to skip goals for, because there's so much in there. Let's talk about services for a minute. One of the biggest mistakes that we see on the IEP, sorry, I'm trying to remember to slow down. So is predetermined services. Your IEP should never, and if I didn't say it loud enough, I'll say it again, should never have service hours filled in on a draft IEP. Right there, that shows that a team has predetermined services and they cannot do that without you. A team can also not predetermine ESY so if it says extended school year, ESY, no, or yes, they can't make that decision without you. This is what the services page looks like. When you see it, nothing should be filled in, nothing. In fact, if the person, uh, if the provider was smart and those that we work with now know, they won't even send home this page. If they told you that, it pre-populated and therefore it was sent home that way? No. It's really important to know that this should never be filled out. Okay, so um, it's, I, I see we have 60 yeah. questions in the chat and we're here. So um, I don't know, you know, Sue or Melanie, how you wanna handle it. If anyone wants to leave, if anyone wants to stay, we're happy to answer questions. Yeah, I think I just want to mention, you know, probably some people cannot stay longer, um, though it's really generous of you to to um, continue the presentation um, past the scheduled time. But for those, um, here, I'll turn on my video. For those of you who can't stay, we, we are recording this and we will send you the links to um, it, both in Spanish and in English to the entire presentation. So feel free to leave if you need to. Um, and then you can, when, when you get the link to the recording, just watch to the end. And I can put that, the, um, the form um, in the chat for Monday, if, if um, anyone is interested in, um, you know, having questions answered and they can't stay now, right. I'm going to put that. Um, and just to summarize, just to summarize, you know, we did, we, we did talk, we, we hope, you know, that there was some good information regarding the, um, the three big main rocks, the three big rocks of the IEP and why each of them, each one is important and how they, you know, they connect. You have to have those present levels in order to write those clear goals and that you have to have those supplementary aids in order to um, make sure that, you, you know, the instruction is appropriate and that you're leveling the playing field. Um, we also talked about some, some rights 
that you have some big that you are a part of the team and you have these rights to um, have certain materials ahead of time. And I think another big thing we wanted we talked about is the idea of no surprises and that um, trust but verify that you are you are your child's best advocate. And um, hopefully we've given you some tools to, to start that advocacy or continue that advocacy. So we'll stay on if anyone has um, is here and would like us to field questions. We're happy to do that. OK, I think it looks yes. like a lot of people. Are talking, <laughs> saying, but I, sure. I want to mention a couple of things that for those of you who do need to leave. We I put a link in the uh, chat for our very quick two question feedback form. We really appreciate it if people would um, click on that and complete it for us. Um, we find that very helpful. Um, and Stacy, you've put into the chat a Google form, and that is a form that people complete to do what? Um, if, so, so that's Monday night. We're going to um, offer a 7 p.m. session um, on Zoom to answer any questions, any more questions that have come up after people have thought. Um, you know about the information, and that that's the form um, that that just needs to be filled out, just so we know who to expect and if you have any questions for us. And a link and to the link. Yeah, that. Oh, the link is right here where it says forms. I'll put it in again. No worries. The the link to actually join on Monday night. Yep, yep. Yeah. I'm going to do that right now. Okay. Um, I put it in above, but I'll do yeah, it again. Put it again. Okay. And our I, action in it. The form isn't working. I okay. Hold on. <laughs> okay, we, we will be sending a follow up email to everybody who has registered, and in that email, we will put all the links that you need, both to yeah. the form and to join on Monday night. On Monday, okay. um, or you can just send me a Gmail. Um, this is my Gmail. Just say you'd like to come, and I'll I'll get you. Oh, someone said the form worked for them. Yes, oh, excellent. Yeah. Okay, great. And our action minute is to fix the spelling on the PowerPoint. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Donna. I feel I'm a big action minute person. Sorry. Okay, so so let's get to the questions. Here we go. All right. So uh, this person is asking, what can we do if the school is giving special education co-teaching hours to students? So education. I'm not sure I understand the question. Co-teaching out, meaning students are acting as co-teachers or they're saying, I don't understand the question. Can we get clarification on it? If if this parent is still here, perhaps they can write in the chat. Hola, es para la, Hola, es para la pregunta en español? Um, yes, we should have Carolina. Can yeah, you? I'm right here. Como oh, <laughs> nosotros, como los padres podemos asegurarnos que los niños están recibiendo las horas de educación especial, por ejemplo, el co-teaching, por ejemplo, si mi hijo tiene cinco horas a la semana, como yo asegurarme que, que ellos están haciendo esas cinco horas con él? Uh, what she's talking about is how they can make sure, how can parents make sure that uh, if the service hour says they need, they are having five hours of uh, co-teaching um, class, how can parents make sure that those hours are actually being given to the child? So like normally, teacher, yeah. yeah, normally a co-teaching class is middle and high school. That's the terminology. Right. Is that what they, the student is? Use? Middle high school? El estudiante está en elementary or middle or high school? High school. High school. Oh, yes. Yes. High yeah. school. Yeah. So, um, first of all, every time you get a schedule, if it says that it's, if you have a co teacher, it'll list two teachers. Um, and that it's up to the, well, they call it co taught because sometimes it's an instructional assistant. But hopefully, your child will be able to tell you that there is a, a para educator or another teacher in there, who, right? Who's supporting? Who's supporting them? In the five hours would probably be like you know the five classes, the five you know. Yeah, if it's five hours a day, right. I've, I've I've never seen. Well, I guess yeah, that could be in services. Yes, it would probably be listed like co-taught classes in science, math, physics, right. math. You know, it, it would list. The classes, the the subject areas that will be have co-taught, and there were probably five of them. I guess you know. Right? Yeah. 
All right. Um, the next question was from earlier in the evening, and you may have answered it. But yes. to clarify, the question is: Isn't related services part of the IEP? Yes. 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 It's, yes. But OT and PT cannot be an IEP by themselves. In other words, if you had OT needs, you're not going to get an IEP right. for just OT. You could right. get it for um, for speech and language, which is also considered right. a related service. And let's not forget, vision is a related service mm -hmm. as, as Orientation well. Orientation and mobility right. is right. a related service. Okay. OT, PT, all that great stuff. Yeah. And then Sorry, so we weren't clear on that before. That's okay. Um, and then speaking of services, this is a parent whose child is moving from a general education program to a regional autism program, which includes a BCBA. What can a parent ask for to be included in the IEP or where can the this information be found? So included as far as I'm a little confused as to the question. What is it that they would like included? Services? Is that what I'm? I was thinking it was a services question, but if this. Yeah, it sounds like it's a services question and it would be put written into the IEP and then documented in the services page. If you're moving from a general education to um, a specific program, then that then hopefully if that IEP is written correctly, all of that is already reflected in that IEP. If it's not, then you need to make sure that it is. And we um, had a, a student. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, Hi. That question. Um, so I guess I'm not sure what to ask for from this regional program. Um, I'm not sure. I don't know what I don't know. So I'm not sure what to ask for for to put on the IEP so that he's established with a really good IEP going into this program. Yeah, that's probably a heavy, a heavy right. hitting question. Happy to talk to you yeah. about it. Um, you, you know, off offline. Especially what what needs do you think he he needs, and then we can say where it where it would come. Do in. you do you mind telling us which program it is at which school? Um, we're in Carroll County, so it's a uh, Winfield um, Elementary School. We're going from the from the Carroll Town, hopefully going from the Carroll Town to the um, uh, Winfield um, Autism Program. Mm -hmm. But it's a bit confusing because they set up an IEP meeting to collab with the two schools. But yes. I, that's the IEP meeting that we're going to decide if he is going to that school or not, or if it's just to like to include them. Oh, so you don't, okay. So you don't, so a decision has not been made to move. On, on placement, yet. yeah. On placement. No, they haven't, but we okay. have to get them on, into the meeting with me on the, the annual meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, I just don't know what's supposed to be happening. Like, why are they there if they're not there to decide? Well, they are, they could, they oftentimes you do, you do, well, you do have, if you're considering another, an alternate placement, another placement, you, um, you would have a, a school present from that placement. And, and we would suggest having the, uh, the administrator there, somebody who knows the placement, the, the program and who knows what they can offer. We had a situation where um, the principal did not come. It was a, uh, from another uh program and the principal didn't come and the teacher only came and she made all these promises. Yes, he can have blah, he can go to main school, whatever. He can do this, this, and this. Well, then it turns out, no, he couldn't, but the teacher shouldn't have said whatever. So you need somebody from whatever school they're thinking of placing him. And, and then you, they'll have a discussion all about your child. And then the, that program will say, yes, I think we can, you know, we can serve him. This is what we have. And then, um, yeah. you know, and then, but yeah, because yeah. this is, sounds like a, 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 a big, yeah. yeah, a pretty big in-depth. Yeah, and we can, I'm happy to talk to you about it and, and and help you in any way that we can. Um, I put my email in the chat if you want to email me. Um, yeah, happy to help. We're gonna try our best. I want to get through everyone, so we're gonna try to limit, if possible, our questions to a minute. So, so what's the next Sorry. question? No, no, that would that would be hard for me. Go ahead. All right. I mean, our um, answers. Go ahead. Right. The next question, I understand that advocates can be expensive. Do you have any suggestions on how to find a reputable and affordable one? And would a facilitator be the next best person in lieu of an advocate? So my husband always says I'm not a very good businesswoman. Right. Donna and I do, do, do not turn anyone away. 
we we work with anybody dependent you know if you came to us and said here's what i can afford that's what we take and we are in my opinion you know the most reputable you can get so feel free to reach out to us um our whole mission is to make um special at a better place for everybody all right um and the next question is a follow-up i believe they were asking before about their three-year-old um and part of your re recommendation was to set up a parent observation and the question is who do i need to contact regarding setting up a parent observation same question for an outside observer to come in I was told by the teacher that you only request an outside observer if we are requesting or considering to move him to a different program for the next year. And we don't want him moved for next year. We feel like they are trying to push him out of special education. So you contact the principal mm -hmm. and if the prince it's it's at the discretion of the principal, but if they say no, there's always someone else you can right. talk to. I mean, you can't have somebody in there every day observing your child, but I'm not understand why you couldn't have, you know, one one outside observer come sure. in. Sure, transparency, to, to, transparency. Yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah. Okay. So contact the principal. Yeah. All right, um, the next one is if it has been three years since our initial IEP, should we get updated evaluations or letters from our executive functioning coach and tutor for our upcoming IEP meeting? It's in two weeks. Oh. Yeah, so that was part that actually now that um, that's mentioned that we glossed over and I meant to kind of spend some time on. At re every three years, there's a reevaluation planning meeting. It gets glossed over and parents will say, we've had parents who said, well, he hasn't been, um, tested since kindergarten and he's in 10th grade. Well, you had reevaluation planning meetings. No, uh-uh. Well, send us all you have. And we see the notice for reevaluation planning, which means it wasn't explained to the parent because quite honestly, schools don't always want to do it. I personally, every three years, I do not care what the school says. It, it is new data mm -hmm. and it is needed to drive right. goals and they objectives. Will, they will say, well, if if they're not trying to, if you think push him out, but if they if they're not trying to push him out of special ed, um, they'll say, well, why is it needed? He already has the code. Well, like Daisy said, it needs it's for updated data to inform. It's not assessment um, of learning; it's assessment for learning. So it's assessment to say what can we continue to work on, and how can we, you know, how can we continue to help him. So, okay, and and the next question is about um, the diagnosis code. Uh, this person said that her child has a speech code and they recently got an autism diagnosis, but the school is saying not to change the code because they don't see a need. What, what would you say about that? I'm sorry, can, can you repeat that one one more time? Yes, so this this parent has a child who ha who is coded with a speech delay. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. They recently got an autism diagnosis, mm -hmm. but the school is saying uh, that they shouldn't change the code because they don't see a need. So the school can't mm -hmm. make that. That's a predetermination meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and MSD would be all over that. You have you have to go to a screening meeting again and and present all all the data. One person or two people or three or a school mm -hmm. team they cannot tell you that not that 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 there's no need. right. Even if they're not seeing, they might not be seeing characteristics or you know of of the autism you know manifesting in the classroom. But you know, but a lot of times too they'll say that they don't see it, and then you get there in the meetings and you realize, oh, well, you do see right. it. You or, just don't yeah. realize you yeah. see it. Or do you know what you're looking for? Right. You no. Know, right. Um, yeah. Yeah. But no, that's predetermination. They can't do that. All right. And then um, the next question: When a parent is seeking outside help, um, you did talk about the difference between an educational, um, a special education lawyer and an advocate. It, it, what about an educational consultant if they see? So an advocate and a consultant is the, basically the same thing. 
a, a, an advocate is just that they go with you and they advocate for you. A consultant talks, you know, we also do that more about placement and, and the needs of your child and kind of where you can go and, and what can be done. It, it's really, the, it goes hand in hand. Okay. And then you did talk about recording the IEP meeting and having a right to do that. Um, this person asked, do you need to ask permission to record an in-person IEP meeting prior to the meeting? And can they refuse? They yeah. can't refuse, but but you need to ask right. beforehand. And, yeah. and out of respect, you should give them, you know, as much notice as, right. as you can. And you do, you, you do. They do have to record it yes. if you if you request it. It's if it's an we, I had to do that. I this is years ago. I had to go out and buy a yeah some kind of a crazy thing just so I could record it. But yes, it's law. They don't have to have their pictures on it though. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's but it's become a lot easier with the phone. I I still right. have we didn't have yeah we didn't have a recorder. Um, didn't, didn't, exactly. Okay. The the next question is how long will the school use the information in a private neuropsych? Uh, well, it's considered relevant for three years. Mm -hmm. It's put on the IEP. Some teams will tell you that they won't um, consider it any more than two years old, but rule of thumb is three years. Okay. In the first section on the page where they talked about sources and listed academic therapists and tutors, et cetera, how often do those sources need to be updated? I would update them every annual yeah. IEP, every mm -hmm. year. Okay. Or if you need to make an amendment. Right? Yeah. Or, or if, if you need to make an amendment. You know, or if there's a been, periodic review. Or if there's been new data that's yeah. important to share because your child has reached a goal. I mean, get that goal off and get another one. And if our the next question, if our son already has an ASD diagnosis and is receiving various services such as OT and speech, is there a need for a neuropsych assessment? So who gave, I would ask, yeah. who gave the diagnosis then? That's interesting. Um, I'm assuming a doc. Normally it's the psychologist. A lot of times we see the diagnosis come out of a neuropsych or of a psychological. Um, yeah, I don't. So so what, what, what was the end to that question? I think I, sorry, I got caught up in my head about um, figuring that one out. Is there a need for a neuropsychological assessment? They're already, they already have the diagnosis and they're receiving various services. So is there ever a need, I guess, for- uh, I, I always think there's a need. Um, I, I mean, for, for my child who does have an IEP, I do a neuropsych every three years. And for my two that don't, I still do a neuropsych. I just, I like to have all the information that I can. Yeah, so- um, every three years, right, triennial? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then one parent is asking if you will be sharing a deck of the presentation. What are the uh, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Okay. Um, a parent is asking, I would like to access, oh, I, this sounds like a, the, another question, but I think it's different. I would like to access GoTalk or iPad from the school. He's in the program cap. Okay. Early. Okay. And then so there, again, follow yeah. up he, um, with more information. He goes to a private therapy and he uses a tablet there, but in the school, they don't want to give me access to high tech. So, who, so the school can't make that decision. You really need to talk to the, um, you have to request a Hyatt or an interact consult at the IEP meeting. I mean, that's your right. Okay. And, and uh, find out why they don't. Yeah. To why aren't they? I mean, they? is it what? Why? What's the rationale? What's the data to show that your child does not need it, or it's not going to be an appropriate accommodation for him in school? I don't. Yeah. There's so much fight. You know, yeah. having to fight a system. It's it's tiring. Yeah. And speaking of Hyatt consults, the next question is: Can you tell us what Hyatt consult is again? Um, Sure. So it's a technology consult where a team comes in and they um, look at all the different types of technology or tools that could help your child to better access the curriculum. If they go to the Montgomery County website and type in 
apply yeah. it. You'll it, the page has a lot of resources, has a lot of universal design for learning resources, which are you know accommodations that are available for everybody. They're just good teaching. Um, it's a really good website that has a lot of information. Yeah. And just because I'm reading this on here and it's an easy question to answer, um, Alice Thompson, you're asking if we're in PG County. Yes, we have a lot of clients in PG County. See, it's not only Montgomery that spreads the special education wealth, it's every county. Um, I just want to mention our interpreter will need to leave soon. So I would like to, we, I think we really do have to put an end to this um, after just another couple of questions, no later than okay. nine. Okay. Say thank sure. you. Sure. Thank you. Um, I'm going to skip down here. What should I do? My child is diagnosed with autism, but does not have a disability code. Oh, I would wonder if the dis was the disability code refused by the school or did or have you not submitted the right. um, have you gone through the process? Or? Right. Or has school just said we don't see it? That's too very different. Yeah, um, we don't have a follow up to that one. Um, okay. The next question, I do request that the IEP meeting be recorded, but I like but I, I want it to be in person. The IP team um, has to record the meeting in, do they have to record the meeting in person face-to-face? -face? Sorry. Um, yes. Yeah. 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 Just an audio. Thing. Right. Yeah. Exactly. You can do it on your cell phone. There's an audio um, notes or whatever app. And then um, someone is asking for your email address. I think you did supply that in the chat, correct? Yes, and we also work in Baltimore County. Uh, you know, Mar um, all laws in Maryland are Maryland special ed laws. So we're, we also work in other states too. Okay. Um, and then the service hours, you said that it, that it should not be filled out in advance. What if correct. It, what if it is, what do they do? Um, they're out of compliance. You, just, I mean, you mentioned it. You, you yeah. send an if you you can send an email. Say I noticed that whatever these should not have been filled out. This is a team decision, um, and you know you can put that and say I, I would like that in, um, prior written notice. Um, and it depends on I guess the relationship you have with the team. Like you know if 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 you can say it. It all depends. Like if it's going to be confrontational or whatever, you can push it a little more. You could say you're out of compliance. Um, if not, you know you could just. Like you can you know, you cash, you can say, you know, I noticed that you have the services and, you know, that really should, that should not have been in there. Right. Um, this is a good question. There are, there are no paraeducators in advanced classes. Can it be requested as Oh, we have that. That's coming up. Oh my gosh. So oh. timely. We have that yeah. coming up. Go ahead. Um, so <laughs> I don't sign up for that class. They say there will be no support. Oh, please. Oh, so is yeah. that, if, I'm assuming you mean an AP class and not an honors class. Um, I'm just going to make that distinction. First of all, all honors classes are supported. Second of all, yes, you go and you talk to that principal. Mm -hmm. um, I had the same for, for my daughter and we came to the agreement that although they might not have a para in the class because of scheduling, mm -hmm. they would have um, a para available to her either after school, before school, or during her resource period right. to help with the material. Yeah, because the student should not be denied. That means, right. you know, okay, so my student cannot go into AP because there's nothing to level the playing field in there for him or her. That's that's denying access, right? Yep. Never, yeah. never take that as an answer. And if, if, they, if you talk to the principal and they can continue to tell you that, please feel free to call me because I fought that fight already this year, it, a personal fight as a parent. Yeah, I believe strongly in that one. Um, okay. And then it, again, the services page, if it's not filled out, um, it, that is that for all IEP meetings or all IEP, your side yeah. IEP meeting? Yeah. All IEP. Because um, services are determined by, by the goal. Team. By and goal, by the team, and by the team, but you, you know, you you have to have agreed upon the goals because that drives the service. So if you haven't agreed upon the goals of an IP meeting, how can you say they're going to get five hours of special ed or whatever? Exactly. Okay. So, and again, even if it is pre-populated or whatever, and it's held over from the old IEP or whatever, it's a mistake on the the. the it just share, shows you that it was a mistake on the the teacher's part that they should they should know not to they should cut that page out before they send it. Um. Here's an interesting question. Can a special education teacher 
quote run out unquote of hours for a student so, no 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 okay. absolutely not and if someone is telling you that yeah um you've got a and that's the fight the as a principal it, it was hours based so you know you knew how many hours like 300 hours in the whole school you have of i you know ieps and that there's a there's a um a suggested uh, number of hours that you have and that suggests x amount of positions right so if you have 300 hours maybe that's two and a half teachers special ed teachers and then the principal so that's where it becomes a fight then the principal has to go and fight for extra extra staffing and your special ed staffing changes every year because it's dependent on the number of hours that you have on the IEP it was at least not the number of kids you have with an IEP right so you could have two you know two teachers one year and one teacher the next depends on it you know so no if you they'll, they'll just have to fight for more more um more staffing yeah Okay, I, I I know you you guys are so full of wonderful information and is so generous of you. We told you, we told you, <laughs> and it is really generous of you to give us so much time. So thank well, you, you so much. You. But we do need to put it put it into it. Um, but it's it's great that you guys are offering to do a Q and A on um, Monday night, and you also are available by email for anyone who wants to email you with more questions. Um, we will be sending out a um an email to everyone who's registered with links to the recording in English and Spanish and also a link to the uh PowerPoint slides. So um thank you everyone for coming. Thank you, Stacy and Donna, for an incredible presentation. Thank you for having thank us. Thank you for having us. We 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 appreciate it. Thank okay. And so we'll much. see you again also on April 18th because you will be the presenters uh about drafting IEP smart goals. Okay. Can't wait. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night, everybody. Bye-bye. Okay,